Hello. Today what I want to do is read an article and react to it as I go. So this article pertains to the new, um, what do you call it, Rings of Power series that uh, Amazon is putting out. The title of this article is Jeff Bezos wants Amazon's new Lord of the Rings series to do more than just make boatloads of money. I hope we do Tolkien's work justice. So, just by the title alone, I seriously wonder if uh, Jeff Bezos really even knows what it is that's being made. Um, because if he's aware of it, then he should know that it's not at all doing justice to Tolkien's work, unless by justice you mean social justice. So let's continue on. This was published Monday, August 15th, 2022. All right. One of my friends shared this with me. So here we go. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos chimed in on his company's The Lord of the Rings prequel airing September 2nd. It's likely to rake in major viewership numbers and in turn new subscribers. Um, I don't think so. Given all the previews that I've seen them put out and the various articles that they've written, it doesn't look like it's going to bring in any actual Tolkien fans, maybe new people that aren't familiar with Tolkien that might come just for the special effects or because they need something to watch, perhaps, but I very much doubt that this is going to engage the, the fans, the built-in audience that they hope to tap into. But Bezos told Time, our hearts are in it, and that he hopes we do Tolkien's work justice. Now, I'm... It would be great if that was their actual goal, but given the articles that have been written thus far and what I've seen of the previews and images, I can already tell that um, that this is not their intent. Now, if I was going to give them the benefit of the doubt, the best possible case scenario that I could come to from having seen the preview images and clips is that the people that are making this aren't at all familiar with Tolkien. Not at all. Actually, I think they would have had better luck uh, doing a doing a um, Elder Scrolls-based series or movie. That would be pretty cool. And if they were to do that, then they could have uh, all the racial demographics that they want to have without breaking immersion. But that doesn't really work for Tolkien or his stories, which are for the most part set in Europe. So here we go. Let's continue. Amazon's much-anticipated return to Middle-earth is nearly upon us. Much-anticipated by who? Who wants this? I, I don't know anybody that asked for this or is looking forward to it, nor have I heard of anyone who asked for it and is looking forward to it. So at any rate, uh, Amazon's much-anticipated return to Middle-earth is nearly upon us, and founder Jeff Bezos has chimed in on the $1 billion production. Well, $1 billion is a lot for me, but for them, I don't think it's that much. I'm not sure what Amazon's exact revenues are, but I, I do know that I've bought a lot of stuff from them myself, and uh, for the most part, I can say their service is pretty good, but I don't, I don't think much of their original products, but it is a good vendor. I say it's a good vendor, but not so much a good producer. Um, so yeah, for them, that's not a lot of money, I would assume. In an in-depth feature Monday, Time Magazine detailed the company... Oh. Time Magazine detailed the company's Goliath, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, a prequel TV series set 3,000 years before the popular J.R.R. Tolkien tale we've held dear for decades. Who is we? I, I just don't think that the people that are writing this are in the same boat as, as I am by any metric. Uh, I doubt they're a fan of the original Tolkien these are the same kind of people that are always trying to accuse 
um, sci-fi and fantasy fans, as well as Tolkien himself, of being the R word. So, I just, I don't know, it just seems like propaganda. Okay, so particularly thanks to Peter Jackson's highly popular trilogy from the early 2000s. Yeah, and the trilogy uh, that Peter Jackson did was pretty decent. They still made some blunders. They they still uh, made some errors with established lore. Like um, one of them was the way that uh, Sauron is a disembodied eye. And in his letters, Tolkien said very clearly that... Uh, the significance of defeating Sauron is that evil would no longer be physically incarnate. Like he was the last of, um, it was the last battle with a physically incarnate demon or physically incarnate evil. So also it's stated, you know, in the books that Golem saw uh, Sauron himself. And it's also mentioned that he's missing one of his fingers. So the whole eye thing that they made was a mistake, um, either because they didn't do a careful reading of the books or just because they were taking some artistic liberties. But either way, it was a mistake that actually bothered me a lot about the, uh, about the uh, Lord of the Rings movies that Peter Jackson did. But it didn't bother me so much that I was unable to watch them and enjoy what did bother me was a lot of the fan art after that movie relied heavily upon it, and they depicted, a lot of people depicted Sauron as an eye, and I would say, no, he's not an eye, and then I'd do my own illustrations, and people would be like, hey, he's supposed to be an eye. Well, actually, no, he's not. That was something they put in for the movies. That wasn't uh, in the books. Also, there were no elves at Helm's Deep, and the reason for that uh, was because... Um, <clears throat> It was because the the elven realms were also under attack, so they couldn't afford to send extra soldiers to help other realms. And having elves at Helm's Deep would be about as was about as silly as if Dale had sent a regiment of dwarves, and Dale was also under attack. So there were a few mistakes. Uh, I might do a separate video on that, but I would say ninety. 80 to 90% accurate. It was one of the better movie uh, book to movie adaptations that I've seen. And it I do believe it did bring in a lot of new people who then turned around and read the books and some of them potentially became uh, Tolkien fans, but of course J.R.R. Tolkien already had a huge built-in audience because his work is just so good. And most people don't know this, but a lot of today's, a lot of today's, um, or I should say, a lot of other fantasy that was created in the 20th century is partly derivative of his work. Anything with orcs, because he's the one who invented orcs. And so anything with orcs uh, wouldn't exist without his work, or at least not in the forms that we recognize it now. So without Tolkien... There'd be no D and D, no Elder Scrolls, no uh, Warcraft, which Warcraft was actually my first exposure to orcs. But in fact, uh, they weren't the ones that invented orcs, but they sure made use of it. And of course, um, seeing like orcs, humans, dwarves, elves sharing a world—that's all basically inspired by Tolkien. So, uh, also I should mention Raid Shadow Legends would also not exist without Tolkien. So it's interesting. One guy um, really had a lot of influence and still continues to have influence. So, uh, where was I? Yeah, let's continue. It also touched on how the series is likely to be a huge subscription driver as viewers hand over cash for Prime memberships to watch the beloved spinoff. Again, I just don't think so because nobody wants this. Um, you know, the, the Peter Jackson trilogy was not perfect, but at least they got the look and feel, the look and feel and setting correct. Like they paid a 
respectable and proper homage. Um, this thing that Amazon is doing looks like uh, generic 21st fin uh, 21st generic 21st century sci-fi or fantasy. I guess fantasy. It, it does it doesn't look like anything. Uh, it doesn't reflect any culture or recognizable uh, franchise. It looks like it could be anything. And based on all the comments that I'm seeing, and from my own personal experience as a Tolkien fan for over 20 years, I really don't think anybody who is not subscribed to Amazon is going to go and purchase this, purchase a subscription because of this series. As a Tolkien fan, I just, I really don't want to see this series. I actually, um, most of Peter Jackson's work I thought was pretty good, but then the Hobbit movie which it still had the right kind of atmosphere and look to it, but because it deviated from the Hobbit storyline so much, it actually gave me a headache. Like, it was the first time I ever watched something, which gave me a headache just because it, it uh, didn't meet with... It was so far off from uh, my expectations, I couldn't reconcile it, and I couldn't excuse it. It actually gave me a splitting headache, and I didn't want to see any more after that. So I really don't want to see this thing that's coming out. I just, I'd rather not. Um, so I can't imagine it. Maybe a few people, maybe a few people will, will subscribe. Maybe normies. But uh, I certainly will not. If anything, I think um, they might lose some subscribers over this. Okay, here we go. Some fans have been voicing concern that that is what the series is to Amazon, a mere cash cow. No, I mean, maybe. But I think if they wanted to make money off of it, they would at least try to do a good job. I think the way that I see this is it's just another casualty of the culture war where people on the more communist side of things cannot draw an audience with their own original stories and characters, but they want to get their message out. So they take an existing franchise, which already has a built-in following, and then they twist that into their own image and use it as a vehicle for their own message. And maybe they even really do think that they're improving on this, but to the fans, it's an insult because... Uh, if what we want to see, if it's going to go to live action, what we want to see is something that shows the books, like an illustration that's accurate to the books that we can enjoy and appreciate. And when you do your own thing and you put your own spin on it and you put your messages into it, which are not at all what the creator would have ever approved of. Tolkien was not a communist. He, he didn't approve of it. And again, I would just say, read his letters. If you really want to understand him, of course, the people that, are, that make uh, adaptations like this, they don't really want to understand the original creator or his work. They just want to hurry up and take something and uh, use it as the vehicle to get their own message out. Because I really don't believe, I could be wrong, but I'm fairly certain that they're not going to make any money off of this. They'll be lucky if they can recoup their losses. And there's another thing about streaming services is there's just too many of them. There's so many different streaming services that, I mean, it's like, how convenient is it to sign up for one more? I don't know. I don't use any streaming services. I prefer to have uh, DVDs and Blu-rays because when it comes to streaming services, even if there is good stuff on there, over 90% of the stuff that is on there doesn't interest me, and so I don't want to pay for it. I'm not going to use it. And also, that's that's renting. I prefer to own things rather than rent them. So that's why I don't like to do these kind of uh, streaming services. If something's good, 
I'll buy the DVDs and the Blu-rays so that I can continue to watch at my leisure. Like, I want to watch what I want to watch. I don't want to have stuff fed to me, if that makes sense. But that's just me. Maybe I'm getting old. So let's continue. Um, <laughs> I don't. So in other words, I don't think it's a mere cash cow. I don't think that's their goal. I think it's maybe that's part of it. I mean, I really don't know what their motives are. I'm not going to, whatever they say their motives are, I'm not just going to take that at face value. But I suspect it's just uh, it's just an outgrowth of the culture war and claiming territory and properties and taking possession of things, acquisition, and then using it for their own purposes. Um, but Bezos told Time that the project goes beyond reaping economic benefits for the company. Oh, yeah. I just said that, right? It's uh, ideological. It's part of an ideological battle. It's like, oh, you enjoy something? I'm going to take it away from you. You can't, uh, you can't have nice things. All right. <clears throat> Middle Earth is such a beloved world. Yes, it is. And telling the story of the forging of the rings of power is a privilege and a responsibility. I hope we do Tolkien's work justice, he told the, e the magazine in an email. So, again, either he doesn't know what it is that his, his people are doing, or he's just not telling the truth here about what his real motives are. It goes beyond making a commercially successful show yeah i would say it falls short of that but yeah it goes beyond yeah because your motive isn't pro profit i believe it i believe him when he says that i don't think his motive is profit i don't think they expect to make money off of this they're just trying to take territory take ground um everyone working on the show read these stories as kids and our hearts are in it again i just don't i don't i don't know i don't think so it doesn't seem like it hearts are in it okay they're again they're taking a well-established property and they're going to use it to tell their own story and their own message they're going to take names and ideas which someone else came up with and repurpose it to get their own message out there. And Tolkien fans are not going, going to like this. They're not going to have it. Bezos has long been a reported fan of all things science fiction and fantasy. Okay, maybe. Variety reported in late 2017 that he was personally involved in Amazon's negotiation to develop a spin-off of The Lord of the Rings. Bezos was also said to have helped save The Expanse, a beloved sci-fi channel show that was in danger of being shut down in 2018 and is now available on Prime TV. Prime Video is Amazon's prized stallion in the crowded streaming race with heavy hitters like Netflix, Disney, and HBO Max also competing for eyeballs and monthly fees. So there, there we go again. There's... As I said earlier, there's too many streaming services. It's a waste of money. Like, if you stop and think about it, it's a waste of money to be subscribed to all of these. I would just encourage people, you know, at most, maybe have one. And, and just stop and think about all the shows that are on it, how many shows are on this, how much am I paying a month? And how much of these things do I actually watch? And if you're watching a lot, do you really like what you're watching? Or are you just watching so that, so that you use the subscription so that you don't feel like you're wasting your money? Because wasting money is, is one thing, but then there's also wasting time. And money you can recover or you can replenish, but time you never can. Well, you know, time is water under the bridge. So if you're not enjoying something, whether it's a show or a video game, 
like if you're playing some video game and you're you're stuck and you can't figure your way out and it's no longer fun and it's just making you angry, just quit playing or quit watching. That's what I would. That's how I do. Um, at this junction in the market, a key strategy is offering behemoth tent pole programs to entice new subscribers or retain existing ones. Again, what new subscribers are you expecting to bring? And I, I don't think that you're going to even retain existing ones with this. You might lose some existing ones. Okay, but let's see what happens. For Netflix, that has been Stranger Things and Bridgerton, just to name a couple. For Disney+, Plus, that's been Marvel superhero extravaganzas like Loki. Yeah, I don't watch any of this stuff, and I don't have any of these streaming services. I used to watch the uh, Marvel movies. Um... And I enjoyed them. I stopped watching after, uh, oh, what was it? I think after Marvel Civil War. And that one, I didn't even go to see in the theater. I just saw it. Um, uh, I just bought the DVD or something like that when it came out. Maybe I didn't even buy the DVD. I don't remember, actually, to be honest. So it's... So the, this stuff is... All right, let's continue. And for Amazon's Prime viewers... Oh, and for Amazon's Prime viewers have eaten up shows like The Marvelous Miss Maisel and The Boys. And for... This is not a... This is not a proper sentence. Okay. It's Lord of the Rings prequel will likely also be a significant selling point. So... I don't know much about The Marvelous Miss Maisel. I think it has to do with a babysitter. I've heard that some people do like The Boys, and it does have a following. But The Boys is actually, I think it's, I'm not sure, but I think it's actually an original franchise. So when it comes to original products, they're probably there's nothing to compare it to. It'll be judged completely based on its own merits. But you take an existing thing and remake it or adapt it, and you're going to be judged based on the original. So I don't think it, I think it's going to hurt them. This will. Netflix has long been the reigning streamer but saw a dip in subscriber growth in Q1 for the first time in over a decade. Yeah, because there's just too much, and it's not feasible. It's not, um, it's not economic for people to be subscribed to all these different things. And again, how much do you even watch on one streaming service? Much less, you know, you're going to go with three, four, five. I just, I think... Uh, I think it's going to wind down. To help compensate, the creators of Stranger Things have a spinoff in the works. A move, part of a broader plan to take the platform's most successful programs and expand upon them. Okay. However, Netflix has still appeared to have set an example for what consumers want in a streaming service. Amazon announced a new, less cluttered interface for Prime Video in July that looks a lot like Netflix. The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power premieres on Prime Video beginning September 2nd. So, I'm going to say right now, I'm going to make a prediction. This is not going to do well, and they're going to try to hide the fact or make excuses. And in those excuses for why it's not doing well, they're probably going to insult the fans and take pot shots. Um, that would be my guess. But again, well, let's just see what happens. Let's see. The comments section is active. So let's look at some of the comments here. All right. A series set in Middle Earth, but which tackles contemporary issues in a ham-handed and preachy way is not doing Tolkien's work justice. It's perverting it for the sake of trying to appear relevant. And yet Amazon seems to think that they can do Middle Earth better than Tolkien did. Or that they have some sort of weird spiritual insight into Tolkien's mind 
that allows them to interpret and change things. Hard pass. With, <laughs> yeah, I think it's, uh, I agree with that statement, but I think it's the former, not the latter. Uh, they do think they're better people than Tolkien. After all, Tolkien was a R word. Not really, of course. It's absurd. And uh, Tolkien had contempt for race theories. Uh, he wasn't a fan of Nazi Germany. But he did write a story set in Europe during a mythological age. So all the protagonists are Europeans. Or they're... I mean, they are all. So that's what it is. Because that's where it's set. He was writing about his own land and his own part of the world trying to create um, a mythology specifically for England which had that kind of feel to it. It, it had kind of the look and feel of that part of the world. So by the way that they're redoing everything it's definitely not it's definitely not being faithful to the original work. So <laughs> Um, okay, so here, and then a comment underneath. To those saying we haven't seen the series yet, we've seen and heard the actors and showrunners tell us they're activists. I'll take them at their word. Yeah, I will too. Okay, let's go on. Really, here, Knight, uh, Knight Listic says, really, has he actually read Tolkien? Because if, he'd ha oh, if he had, he'd go and fire the people who directed this series. And did the casting for trying to Americanize, American, oh my goodness, my brain is shutting down, I suppose, uh, fire the people who directed the series and did the casting for trying to American liberalize a classic. The blatant ignoring of the actual source material, which has very specific details on the characters and people of Middle Earth is offensive. Yeah, it is. Oh, and here's somebody. It can't be a... Uh, so here, somebody says, it can't be a good final product if there was any sort of agenda other than making a good final product. Oh, very good and well-stated point. That's why every film or show that doesn't... Uh, that's why every film or, so or show that does such things falls short. Maybe there is an exception here and there... and Oh, an exception here and there, but for all... Intensive purposes. He meant to say intense and purposes. It always f fails as a piece of entertainment, which is all it really is. Yeah, and Vanilla Voodoo has a good point. In fact, it's not entertainment when the message is bigger than the story. The story needs to be bigger than the message. To some extent, every story is going to have some kind of message. Um, because people have different views and ideas on things. But whatever that message is, the main attraction and the main point should be the story. Like, the story should be the bigger part, the message the smaller part. That's just kind of riding along. If the message is the biggest part and the story is just kind of t the, smaller, um, the smaller part tacked onto this big message, then the only people that are going to want that are the people who completely agree with the message. So how many people agree with the message of progressivism, and of those people, how many are Tolkien fans? I would think very few to none. So let's continue. Let's keep going. Woke fantasy remakes, I pass. Thanks, though. And most of the comments are not. He hopes we do Tolkien's work justice. Too late. You already vandalized it with your woke ideology. Heh. <laughs> Clatu. That seems very unlikely based on what I've seen and read. So these comments, they're coming from Tolkien fans, and most of the comments are negative. And that's because Tolkien fans, you know, it's, it's a different matter when it comes to... When it comes to things like shirts and shoes, people will buy that stuff based on a logo, like if it's got that little check mark or that alligator, whatever it is, like, oh, I like that. Oh, it's got this logo. I'm willing to pay the price. But 
when it comes to Tolkien uh, and other um, other entertainment franchises, the logo isn't enough. You have to deliver the content, and it has to be what we expect or better. When you try to do like, uh, oh, but it has the Star Trek name. Why don't you like it? There must be something wrong with you. Oh, it has the uh, the Tolkien uh, names on it. It's, we've got Middle Earth here and elves. How come you don't like it? You know, it's, it's got a T on it. You should like it. No, that's not how it works. If you're going to... Anyway, let's, let's keep going here. Let's look at some more content, comments. It's a disaster that everyone already hates. It will be a huge bomb. Yes, I think so. Another comment here. Hmm. This guy says, who is everyone? Everyone who's a Tolkien fan doesn't like this or want it. The trailer posted six months ago on YouTube has 31 million views with 129k thumbs up. It also has 1.9 million thumbs down. Uh-oh, that's TFAM. Huh, they always manage to mess up a project. The executives all always want certain money-making ideas incorporated into the storyline. Too many cooks spoil the broth. Eh. To do justice to Tolkien's work, you need to change his world as little as possible. Yes. That's easy for people who really like Tolkien. For others, it's difficult because their own ideologies and egos cause them to think they can do better. They're wrong. Yeah, I fully agree. So I, I could keep going through and going through. Basically, it's all the... It's Oh, here, I'll read one more comment here. Um, you have already failed. Standing on the shoulder of a giant failed from the first trailer. It's interesting it says standing on the shoulder of the giant because in one of Tolkien's letters, I forget which one, he talks about small men standing on the shoulders of great men only to spit on their heads. So I wonder if uh, Paul has read that same letter. All right, let's see. Let's read this last comment from Ryan James, and this time I'll stop for real. Okay, let's hope Amazon does a much better job than Peter Jackson. I know a lot of people love the Jackson movies, but he basically took a work that he could never have conceived himself and was totally unfaithful to Tolkien. Watching Jackson's The Lord of the Rings trilogy was like watching Braveheart with wizards and elves. The novels leaned heavily into a mythology Tolkien created for the series, many of which were eliminated. Also, Tolkien's novels had much more elements of fantasy, magical creatures, and and beings and adventures. Jackson seemed to almost exclusively focus on battles, battles that were often confusing in how they were executed. I read The Hobbit and The Fellowship of the Ring several times in my lifetime, so that may account for my great dislike for the movies. I suppose had my first and only experience with the Middle Earth mythologies been, Jack's, been the Jackson movies, I might have thought they were really cool, but I really hate it when someone of inferior talent takes a masterpiece, something iconic, and is utterly unfaithful to the work. I wonder how many Tolkien, uh, I wonder how many fans of Tolkien were likewise disappointed. And they actually gave this comment some thumbs down. He's got six thumbs downs and no likes. I'll give him. So, yeah, and this guy is such a zealous fan that. He even has a problem with the stuff that Peter Jackson made. So, uh, Ryan James, I assure you that if that Amazon will not do a better job than Peter Jackson, like that's a given. You can tell just from the preview images and clips that they've released, as well as the articles. So, I have a theory now. A, new, a theory comes to mind. I'm. I'm thinking, I'm wondering, if the reason they released all these articles and images was to turn away all the Tolkien fans, or at least whoever was going to be turned away, to turn them all away at once, so that when the series comes out, there isn't a big drop-off after the first or second episode. So they're trying to get the, maybe they're trying to have the drop off in advance, so that it it doesn't show when um, 
the actual series comes out. But I, I have no intention of watching this series. If The Hobbit gave me a splitting headache, I'm sure that this will as well. And, yeah, I really... I, I agree with uh, Ryan James. Not completely. I think he's being a little too harsh on Peter Jackson, but it, it is also true that Peter Jackson didn't even do a perfect job. He did take some liberties. And yeah, um, most people can't do what Tolkien did. Most people don't have that level of creativity um, and vision. And they, they just don't have the ability to write interesting characters and worlds that's that's very rare there's very few people that uh that are so good at that like i would say uh tolkien is to fiction what mozart was to music it's just a uh, rare talent if i was going to give jeff bezos the benefit of a doubt i would say he probably at best, he probably doesn't know what these people are doing. In which case, I hope that he learns his lesson and doesn't allow this to happen ever again. Because it's, it's going to be a waste of money. They're not going to get back the money that they spent uh, on producing this. Uh, maybe they will, but it'll come from the usual sales that they sell in their online store. It's not going to come from people wanting to buy paraphernalia of this or DVDs or I, I doubt it's going to increase the subscription to Amazon Prime. I think if anything, it's going to hurt them. But again, you know, we'll we'll just have to wait and see what actually happens. And yeah, I think I think that's it. I think that about wraps this up. I probably went on a lot longer about this than necessary, but it's been a while since I've produced any videos, and I don't know when. Um, actually, I do have some better things on the way, um, but I'm doing artwork for them, and it's taken me forever. So for now, if anybody's still subscribed to my channel, there's this video at least. Thanks for listening.